it looks like we are going to cut down to our future mission here. All right, let's see what the news oh. shows. All right, so it looks like uh, Martin has brought the Gorios deck versus Nathan with the Frog deck with their selected ones. And it looks like Martin's let's on a Mold go. of Five. Yeah, unfortunate mulligan from Martin, but I do have that turn one Thassies into the turn two Psychic Frogs. So we see that Nathan has two pieces of interaction, but if he didn't have two pieces of interaction, maybe the Psychic Frog could run away with the game. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and one of the nice things about playing against the Frog deck compared to kind of like Murktide is they don't close the door quite as quickly in the early turn. So there isn't like that turn one Ragnarok that sometimes just cheeses a win, you know? Frog and Bowmasters take a little bit of time. In the case of Frog, you can go all in and sometimes it works, but it's a little bit more rare. So Mark's going to get a chance to sculpt through here. As we see a Thoughtseize, we're going to see what he wants to fight over in this game. A lot of good ones here from Nathan. Anything jump out to you, Dingo? Uh, I think personally with the way that Martin's hand is shaping up, I might be after that fatal push and try to keep my frog alive for as long as possible. If not, we have a tainted indulgence in hand. I bow master seems like a reasonable pick to me. Yep. And that was the pick here from Martin. Makes sense too. Maybe he's trying to set up something like a, you know, grizzle brand and bow masters could be a great way to get through that. We pick up a shadowy backstreet, the black white surveil land here. And it looks like Martin's figuring out if he wants to play that. Maybe get a surveil action, get a little indulgence, could even play the frog. Knows that, you know, Storyer can answer the frog in hand, but let's see how let's he see if Martin to... wants to take him to the back streets. Nope, wants to shock in the hollow fountain. Probably just going to play the tainted indulgence. Wow, actually going with the frog. No? Clicks the frog. Maybe he says, nah, I'll go with the tainted indulgence instead because the... Nathan does have a fatal push and actually top deck the second fatal push. So mm -hmm. frog is not long for this world. Yeah, that's very true. And that's one of the nice things about Martin's deck is, you know, he has cards like Frog you can play early that can run away with the game. He has a decent amount of interaction, but he also has these super powerful late game cards that completely dodge what Nathan is, you know, the interaction in the format from Discharge to Fatal Push. And this is why, you know, we saw Matt Sperling uh, get ninth at the Pro Tour, which, you know, in my opinion, you know, basically a top eight, right? His Breakers had a record good enough with that. We saw Kai Buda win the PTQ with this deck. It is a very powerful deck that doesn't play a ton of MH3 cards, so if you're still kind of figuring out what exactly you want to buy and you own most of these before, it's a pretty cheap buy-in. We do see a castle oh, yeah. picked up from Nathan. I don't think Nathan's going to fight over this Tainted Indulgence, but maybe otherwise. Yeah, he is going to fight over the Tainted Indulgence. Wow, I'm surprised. Yeah, this might be a spot where Nathan's just really worried about like a Gorio's Vengeance, like back-to-back -back Vengeances more so than just the first and kind of getting overwhelmed on mana since he missed his land drop. But I'm not exactly sure. We're going to be interested to hear about that one later here. As this does open up a window for Martin to play the frog, and with Nathan stuck on lands, he might be able to kind of sneak it in. I don't think so with the two fatal pushes in hand. But yeah, it is a good opening for the frog here. But top deck the Falaji. Maybe you want to just run out the Falaji and fill the graveyard, try to find the Gorios again. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Kind of power crept Augur of Bolas here with Falaji. And, uh,. Doing great work in this deck. I'd love to see cards like this really see play in modern, you know, just sort of like solid role playing cards. It looks like we just missed. Miss. Yep. Much like Augur Bolas, you know, if you played with that one, you know how it goes. Yeah, that's brutal. Miss for Martin here. Really needed that card on the Mulligan to five. Yep. And we're getting a surveil action happening here. I'm going to be curious to see, you know, if Nathan fights over this Falaji. Not, you know, on his next turn. He's probably not going to tap out of his Drown the Lock. But, you know, at the end of our next turn uh, here with the Fatal Push, you know, see if he wants to fight over that kind of stuff. Looks like he's just going to tap out and play the Murktide right now after picking up the Force Negation. I really like Love this it. play from Nathan. Love it. You got Force Backup. Just send it. Yep. Gonna the only thing you're it. really scared of is, like, Solitude. And it's Solitude <laughs> off the top. <laughs> Martin, you're rewarded there. And, you know, this is a really powerful one. And, and this is open deck list, so the players know exactly what's available to them. So Mara might be taking a second here just to double check. Also on the mulligan, you know, you never want to give it up too much here. Yeah, Martin's probably checking for subtlety. If he passes the turn back and tries to solitude and upkeep, for example, the Drown of the Lock can snipe the solitude because there's five cards in the graveyard. So definitely just want to solitude now. We've been try to dodge subtlety. Dingo, they're scamming us. Look at their clocks. We were told that when you and I play, it's 25 minutes. But when the A-listers come around, they get an hour-long feature match. Wow. You notice that? See, see the difference? Right? Unreal. 
follow the money. Psychic Frog comes down, and we're going to see probably an attack for one. But yeah, you know, this Molda 5 here for Martin isn't so bad. Like, obviously, we're kind of out of gas now, and we know that the board's going to be able to be answered, but he's putting up a pretty good fight. Yeah, you got to push the frog. Maybe you want to just hold up Spell Pierce here. Do you ever, like, push the Archaeologist on end step? Yeah, maybe. It kind of depends here. Um, I imagine you can just take one for a couple turns and just make sure Martin doesn't draw another frog because he doesn't have a big thing in the graveyard or uh, a real threat on board or a way to reanimate as far as we, you know, we know. So Nathan knows that it's going to take a little bit of time. So he probably just wants to save his fatal push to make sure there isn't a card that actually catches Martin up. Yeah, I might want to like fatal push in response to an ephemerate if Martin ever top decks the ephemerate for the archaeologist. Yep. And Grizzlebrand picked up here from Martin. We might not see it this turn, but you know, we do have access to the very spicy thought these ourselves line. Love uh, it. Last resort is something you can do. And yeah, it looks like Nathan's taken enough. Yeah, I wanted to have the drown lock up in case Martin did have the ephemerate. Then you could drown the ephemerate or drown the archaeologist. Makes sense. We're going to see the dismal backwater. The rail. These are rail lines have been great. They have been a really big part of modern. You know, I only recently learned that deep analysis is a sorcery. I thought that card was an instant for the longest time. <laughs> That's the MH4 version of deep analysis, my friend. I know. <laughs> Mason, get on yeah. it. <laughs> if they'll have me. <laughs> and we're going to see a consider picked up from Nathan in the passing of the turn. Bloodstream, the draw from Martin. This is kind of a big land drop. You know, he'd much rather kind of draw spells, but now cards like Grief are life draws, which are pretty good threats here. Picks up land number four, which is pretty big too. Mm -hmm. There's land number five. So maybe we're just casting a deep analysis here with the force negation backup. You know, once again, Martin's so far away from actually doing anything. Divination. Classic. And we picked up the frog as well, so we have a clock. Right on time, frog. Could have discarded the deep analysis and made it cost two less, but instead you're in the top two. Oof. What are you doing, frog? Or it. Under city sewers, surveil. Did your land come with an entomb? Yeah, we'll have to see. He's taking a, t a think on it. Makes me wonder if it's some sort of like, you know, tainted indulgence esque card uh, or something he's not like super happy to see. Oh, Priest, Priest of Felright. So that's a good one. <laughs> yeah, that's uh, unearth uncounterable, not an alternate casting cost. It's just, it comes straight out of the graveyard, just a trigger. Mm -hmm. I'm curious to see if Martin, you know, is going to do something like a Thoughtseize here to put them in Gristle Brand. Um, might not be the best time to do it, but he also knows that, you know, Nathan probably has something when he was willing to tap out earlier in the game for the Murktide. We'll have to see how Martin wants to play it. A very interesting spot here. And it looks like he's going to wait. Yeah, I don't think there's too much emphasis on martin to do it right now although if he top decks land number five could just unearth straight away and get that gristle brand into play but then he'd only have 13 life so he could only draw seven from the gristle brand and not the full 14 mm -hmm. i guess it would also cost three life from the priest activation on top of that yeah can indulge just the pickup very big draw here yeah you see yeah. martin starting to set up now he's going for the thought seize. With that one as the pickup, definitely thought sees the opponent, see what they're working with. Because now you have a discard outlet for the Gristle Brand. You just have to make sure it resolves. And if you're Martin looking at Nathan's hand, you're like, oh, it's not resolving. Yeah. No chance. Uh, no chance at all. But Martin's got to do something. And takes the Drown of the Lock, meaning that if he draws a land for this Solitude, the Psychic Frog will be answered, which is pretty big. It would put the game back at parity. In fact, in Martin's favor, as we're going to see the flashback deep analysis. Like, it's 1998, and <laughs> Murktide region's picked up. Two life, two cards. Knight's Whisper would be proud. True. I love it. Nathan does not need these extra lands. He's going to discard the first one and draw a second frog off the trigger. You know it's better than one frog, Mason? Two frogs. I'm one running frog. out. Orbit. Two frogs. Deploy it. No, Orbit. not the Murktide. A second frog. It wants to get frisky. Yeah. 
Frog draws cards, Merktide ends the game, which means you draw less cards. It really makes you think. Math just doesn't add up on this play. And the Marsh Lass was the pickup here for Martin. That's going to mean Solitude is a live play. And we'll be able to answer this Merktide. Now, Nathan can give the Frog flying still. There's enough things left in the graveyard. Not even counting what he could discard from his hand if he wanted to. It looks like Martin's just going to go for the main phase cast of this. And I really like this. Yeah, so Nathan doesn't have an answer to the Solitude right now, which means it is going to snipe the Murktide, and that Murktide was going to just end the game on the spot because you can discard instants and sorceries to Psychic Frog and then delve them for flying, and then when you delve them for flying, the Murktide grows, which is really a sick interaction. Mm -hmm. Does Nathan have anything like a subtlety in this deck? Is he like considering into a subtlety here for the Wham Bam? Let me check the list. I believe that there are... Some number of subtleties in here. Yeah, I couldn't remember if they were main or sideboard. Spell snares to pick up, so that's going to give Nathan another answer to this tainted indulgence. So if Martin ever gets a chance to cast it, uh, it is almost surely not resolving unless Nathan wants it to. Also, another just great answer to the Warrior's Vengeance. There are two subtleties in the list. Okay, nice. So, pass outs to those. And it looks like we're going to see Nathan just start by casting a frog and Probably get into do you the just red want zone. flying, or do you think you just attack? Uh, I don't mind just giving up flying. You know, just get your card. I'm honestly not too sad if Martin blocks with the Solitude, because it takes Ephemerate off the table as being like a real threat. But you do have sure. like infinite counter magic already, so... I don't know if the decisions really matter at this point after picking up the second counter spell. Here's where I differ than Nathan. Nathan, world champion, one of the greatest players of all time, plays this. Mason, I'm discarding frog to frog, and I'm saying, have it. <laughs> <You know? laughs> do more. Next turn, I'm going to discard my whole hand and kill you. You need to do something. <laughs> now, obviously, this sign's a little better. It makes it so Solitude can't you know, get in a racing situation with the lifelink. Um, but Martin is in a weird spot and doesn't know that Nathan has all Ds. Yeah, Nathan's got one of the most stacked hands at this point in the game that nothing is resolving on the side of Martin ever. Mm -hmm. One thing I guess is interesting, and I don't remember how Priest of the Felrites works, is it can return even non-legendary creatures from the graveyard, correct? Because it could return Archon. That is correct. So, yeah, actually a super smart play there from Nathan, because if you had blocked with the... Allowed the Solitude to block, or if the Solitude gets blocked and killed here, you can Priest of Felrites back to kill the frog. Which there actually is another Solitude in the graveyard on the side of Martin, so he could still do this play. Oh, like yeah, I forgot about the one that got milled like 30 turns ago. <laughs> yeah, I got half the Falaji, I believe, which gave it a counter. I believe so. I'm right. thinking twice about it, because he's going to go to four from unearthing this Priest and then sacrificing it for the Solitude. You hit the bigger frog, and then you're still just like kind of dead on board to this other frog. Mm-hmm. Nathan decides to just dump his entire hand. And it looks like Martin's going to try to taint his indulgence. Curious to see here how Nathan wants to go for it. He's going to fight with the spell snare, living up to counter spell and spell pierce. <laughs> oh, it looks like he's he going to spell, spell pierce. pierce. Okay. This is I smart like because if Martin goes to pay for the spell pierce, like he's going to, you can just spell snare it and then still have counter spell and force negation up. Mm -hmm. Yep, I like it. I don't know, just lets it resolve. Just says, yeah, I don't care. Yeah, this makes sense too, because now Nathan, I think, has enough cards with the draw for turn that he can discard his whole hand for lethal on the frog. And he's kind of tapped Martin out a bit while still having a spell snare. So that if Mario went like land Gorios, he would have the answer. Yeah, precisely. He's just trying to conserve as many cards in hand as possible to come across for these last seven points of damage. I think if you're Martin, you probably have to attack the Solitude into the Frog. Yeah, I think so. Because you're just dead on board currently. I guess you do have the Ephemerate, but that we know that's not resolving. And it's still just enough cards to close out the game on top of that. Yep. And we're going to see all these frogs activate discarding all of our cards. 
or pump spells. And I think one of the big things about playing this card is you got to be willing to do stuff like this, right? Dingo, just discard your hand a little bit, throw away some quote unquote value in order to kind of push for the win. Yeah, big fan of just discarding your entire hand and saying, this is my win condition. It's got to get there. Mm hmm. We're going to see these lethal frogs come in. We're going to see an attempt at a but we know it's going to get countered. But unless Nathan decides to be weirdly nice, you know, he just wants to play some more magic, draw some more cards with his frogs, who can blame him? But he decides to take the win. And we're going to go into sideboarding here. And Dingo, anything in the sideboards that jump out to you? You know, we got a chance to look at these deck lists a little earlier. Let me look at Nathan's sideboard. He's got three copies of Break the Ice, three Consigned to Memory, one Force Negation, two Nile Spell Bombs. Definitely want to bring those in. Additional copy of Spell Snare. Probably don't need the Shadows Verdict. Maybe you want an additional subtlety for the Grief and the Solitudes that are coming in from the side of Martin. Uh, but yeah, I think mainly just the Force Negation and the Spell Bombs mm -hmm. would be what I'd be after. You could also see the Stern Scoldings because Falaji gets hit by Stern Scolding as well as Grief and Solitudes. So that might just be better. Sure. Yeah, his frog as well, too. Looks like Nathan put it aside to think about it a little bit here. On the side of Martin, though, we've got some Celestial Purges, some Consigned to Memories, Wrath Disguise, Dream of Magistrate. That card is going to be basically dead today. Leyline saying D and Nihil Spellbomb. You know, I could see a couple different cards here for Martin in this matchup. You know, maybe you want to play in your spell bombs to fight over the Merc Tides from coming down. Maybe you want to, you know, have some. Uh, Celestial Purges in case of, like, you know, the Frog getting out of hand, but probably a little too narrow. Lots of different things you could see here. And it looks like he's kind of laying out his deck, figuring what he wants to do. Looks like he's just trimmed a couple cards and brought in some Spell Bombs. So Looks like just a Singleton Spell Bomb, and then he boarded it out. So it looks like really no changes from the side of Martin. I don't really blame him, because Celestial yeah. Purge is a little bit conditional because if nathan just sticks an early merc tide here you can't really answer it with the celestial purge and then nile spell bomb against merc tide you kind of have to guess mm -hmm. when it's going to come down you can't really just like have an open opportunity where it's like okay now is the time to spell bomb you have to anticipate when you think the merc tide is going to come down so spell bomb's a little bit clunky too mm -hmm. that's okay it looks like nathan's just figuring out if he wants the consigns probably for the atraxa and grizzlebrand triggers as a way to stop Martin from drawing a lot of cards. Yeah, the consigns for the Atroxa trigger is a little cute. I don't know if you even want the Atroxa to come and play in general, because if Martin just has the Ephemerate rolled up, then the trigger really doesn't matter. You have to have another consign for the second trigger when it gets Ephemerated. So I kind of like just fighting over the Gorios itself and not worrying about if the Atroxa gets into play, what do I do? Makes sense. I do like, though, that Nathan's second time to think about it. I think that's a huge thing, right? Dingo kind of like a big step of his, even if you're not going to do it, just double checking, right? And be like, hey, this doesn't, this is a thing that could matter. Does it matter, right? And that is a big delineation point, I think, that a lot of people could learn from here. As we are looking at our seven card hands, Nathan's trying to hide that deep analysis from us, but kind of has, you know, a hand that just draws cards that doesn't do very much. Martin, on the other hand, has got a lot of, uh, Redrawing effects and ways to put stuff in the graveyard with the Gorios, but no big fatty boom boom yet to bring back. I like the mulligan on the side of Dave, and you kind of have a mulligan to five with two deep analysis in your hand and no frog. If you had the frog in that hand, I would definitely keep it. Now he's got a hand with two copies of Undercity Sewers, which is a little clunky, but I mean, double spell snare is really good in this matchup. Most of Martin's important cards are two drops, and then puts back the Merc Tide, keeps his hand. Makes sense to me. Yeah, I like this. Nathan might be expecting for Martin to try and be playing kind of the most fair game possible while sort of saying, hey, if you ever tap out, I'm going to go for it. So he wants to keep kind of a fairish hand as well. And like you said, Spell Snare is basically, you know, the perfect card against Martin. We are going to see some surveilling happen here from Martin. Figure out, is he going to get lucky, you know, put a Grizzle Brand immediately into the graveyard? Yeah, I really like this hand from Martin also. Just kind of does everything you want it to do. A couple surveil lands, Tainted Indulgence have been a big threat. They got the Gorios rolled up. Priest is redundant and avoids counter magic later in the game. Mm -hmm. Yeah, turn one, Dark Slick Shores. Untap land off the top. Definitely just going to leave up that spell snare in case of frog, in case of, I guess you'd push the frog, but in case mm -hmm. of Tainted Indulgence here or whatever else. Yeah. And it looks like Martin's just going to play his land, figure out exactly what he wants to do. A lot of options available to him here. 
an indulgence at the end of turn, and then you know just put the priest on his main face if he wants to. Looks like he's just gonna go for the indulgence on Nathan's turn. So if Nathan has a spell snare or a spell pierce, that it will tap him out a little bit, and then if it was force negation that he had, it will resolve. So heads up play here by Martin, and you wouldn't expect anything less from him. How do you feel about doing it on upkeep versus end step? Basically playing on force negation and tapping down Nathan's mana. So I think it makes sense. It is the tap land from Nathan, so no second spell snare up here either. Drew Merc tied for turn. Brief is the pickup from Martin. Curious to see if he wants to go for this now. Can also fetch a surveil land and hope to high roll an Atraxa, and it would be good. <laughs> Yeah, see if the Entomb in comes with the land. Mm -hmm. All right, looks like that's what he's going for. Because if you are able to hit either a Troxler or Gristlebrand off this Surveil land, and then you can Grief, Pitch, Gorios, or Priest, and then Gorios, and it's party time. Solitude Solid hits the Can bring it back with the Priest, but I don't think this Priest is going to survive. Yeah, the priest is probably going to end up dying here and like, you know, in a very awkward point in the next turn cycle, probably gets in a little bit and then Nathan's going to be like, yeah, push that or whatever, let's move on. They're going to see another surveil happen here from Nathan. Both these players really using these murder call off manor lands to their fullest extent. Fourth land picked up from Martin. Do you think it's a hard cast grief this turn? Or do you think it's a pitch grief and then we see a legacy style play of reanimate grief after we evoke it? Um, I thought Gorius would only get legendary creatures. I met with the priest. Oh, with the like, priest. Oh, excuse yeah. me. Yes, yes. My bad. My bad. I totally forgot that uh, the priest could activate. I like that line. I also think you can just hard cast your grief so that if Nathan has some like counter spell, you know, he like would actually use it on the grief. Or if he evokes it, Nathan, you know, might be willing to have that trade happen. This one's just a lot harder of a place for him to be and allows Martin to potentially save the priest. Yeah. So. See? Nathan counterspells this. Martin could just bring it back with the priest and then still get the discard effect. So I mm -hmm. agree. I do like this better. Looks like Nathan's just going to go for the fatal push on the priest to make sure that exact thing doesn't happen, but he's still going to lose a card from his hand. Yeah. And I think I like this. I think Nathan's probably thinking too, like, okay, one of my threats is probably going to be the take. You know, like Merc Tide would be a really strong card for Martin to take here. It's going to be the Merc Tide counterspell, and that's going to inform Nathan's Next plays a lot because it lets him know about what's going on in Martin's hand, but now he gets to keep the powerful counter spell up in case Martin, you know, decides to answer on Merc Tide. He won't get kind of cheesed out of the game quickly. Now Martin has to make a decision because his hand is very awkward at the moment. It's kind yeah. of funny. Uh, you go. Oh, no, good. I was going to say it's funny that, you know, Nathan could play the frog and then Martin could. X is three, the prismatic ending to get around the spell snare. <laughs> as like that is a, cool. You know, yeah. Yeah, it looks like Martin took the counter spell. He's going to leave Nathan with the threats and going to start a race. Oh, spell bomb off the top. Huge pickup. Yeah, I, won I wonder if Martin left the Merc Tide thinking that, you know, a land makes my priest come back and get the solitude. No, Psychic Frog lines up so poorly into the spell snare right now. It really does. We're going to see a grief attack for three. All right, we got the graphic updated. Now Merktide is spelled correctly on the side of Nathan under his name. <laughs> they had an I in it instead of a U for a little bit. Oh, that's funny. Merktide. <laughs> Spell Center is going to answer that Psychic Frog. Prussian's going to go on the stack for Martin. And uh, he's got this Grief going, and we've seen Grief win a lot of games, but Nathan has Merktide Regent able to be slammed. And we Nathan, might even see a double threat. I think Nathan popped that spell bomb just to hit fourth land. I think so, yeah. I, I think Nathan really wanted to kind of, like, get going and have just, you know, an answer and get this threat down. Because if he answers with the spell bomb, you know, he's got pretty much nothing to worry about for at least a turn, and the Merktide kills in basically three turns. So, 
How do you feel about just deploying the frog, deploying the merc tide here? I can see it. I don't mind it at all. Like pretty... Nathan's going with Breedin. I guess he wants to find more interaction because he doesn't know Martin he really has nothing going on in his hand at this point. Yeah. It's prismatic ending and two blanks. Mm hmm. And I bet you Nathan is thinking like, okay, maybe there's like a bigger card second hand, like a solitude, right? That he's, he might be thinking that's part of the reason he left me with this Merc Tide. So maybe Nathan's trying to see like, okay, can I find like Counterspell, you know, and then this turn play the Frog and next turn play the Merc Tide, right? Trying to set up and see what he's going to do. And he kind of knows that no matter what on that turn, he was going to either, you know, double jam threats or preordain. And if he's going to do the preordain line, he might as well go for it first. And I think I saw a Counterspell there when he was kind of hovering his cards Funny enough, Nathan might be able to one-shot Martin from 15 with this Merc Tide plus the Frog combo of delving extra cards out of the graveyard. I can't quite see how many instances. It's like five currently, six with the Preordain. Yeah, I yeah. think we're a little bit off of one-shotting him. We are a little off, but we're going to you know, force Martin to have to have something in a two-turn cycle, and that is a very good place to be. Now, you know, who of these players are you hoping to play against? You know, because you're going to have to play the loser. I have to play the winner. Mm, a world champion or a pro tour amazing player. I'd rather play against either of them. <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> you're going to see a thought he picked up here for Martin. But not the kind of tool he's looking for right now. In with the grief. And then Martin's on a two-turn clock. Although Martin did say he hasn't been playing a lot of modern recently, so I'd maybe I want to fight Martin. <laughs> <laughs> sure, yeah, he hasn't been kind of working since the PT. And we're going to see nothing get played. Yeah, because you know, if you cast the Thoughtseize, it could actually end up being a bigger issue due to the Merc Tide killing a turn sooner if he's able to, you know, get extra pressure added. Martin Wright also is trying to set up a turn to guarantee the Gorios happens. But he is dead very soon from here, next turn, so. Yeah, and then he has to beat both Counterspell and Spell Snare. You can Thought Seize one of them. But, I mean, you, yeah. you don't even have any way of stopping the Merc Tide. That's probably yeah. just game. Yeah, that's game. I mean, I think, you know, we we know it here in the booth, but from Martin's perspective, that Counterspell last turn on Nathan's draw step was just game over. And, uh, you know. Yeah, these go for Surveil Land here. Hit a big threat. Can go for one Gorios, gets a Counterspell. Go for the second Gorios, get it Spell Snared, and that's a wrap. Yep. These fetch lands showing how strong they are. But, yep, just hit another Mark Flat. Unfortunate here for Martin. Put up a good fight. But Nathan Storyer is going to win this match, advancing on to the winner side of the bracket. I'll be playing Nathan here in a minute, and you'll be playing Martin as well. And it's going to be an exciting matchup.